Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. Today, we are talking about integrity. And for myself personally, just so you know, integrity is one of my deepest, deepest core values. It is very important to me. And I also believe that my integrity is one of my biggest strengths. Personally, I think it's one of the best things that I bring to the world, to my relationships, to the work that I do. And I'm just going to be speaking to the energy of integrity, like the energetic signature of integrity, as well as giving you a story time on why this is so important to me and how this was even forged within me. And that might actually give you some information on where you land in response to what I'm sharing with you in terms of your own relationship with integrity, what it means to you, where you might really feel this is resonant with you, or you might have the opposite experience with integrity where it it actually frightens you and brings up a lot of fear of persecution, all sorts of things. There's a lot going on with integrity, so I'm excited to dive into this today. As always, if this resonates with you or if you know someone who could benefit from this podcast, please send it to them, share it with them. I really appreciate all of the love and shares that you give to this podcast. I appreciate you. And I also want to let you know it is open application season for Eden. So if you would like to be in my mastermind, 2022 has massive things in store. I have been, at least for myself personally, so excited about what's coming in 2022 and the potential of 2022 and all of the intentions that I'm setting for the clients and the the women in my mastermind and just all of the goods that are coming this year. So if you feel called, you can check it out. You can get a feel for it. The link will be in the description box or the show notes, depending on where you're listening to this. It's onyxhealing.com slash Eden. And I also have added another dimension to Eden in this next cohort, where not only are you going to get a monthly tarot reading that's personal to you for the month, I have decided to blend in some cosmic council elements to this. So in the middle of each month, you're also going to be getting another guide to work with as well. So it is going to be extra magical, extra energetic. It is going to be super, super dynamic in terms of the type of container that it is. So you can bring your manifestations, your your prayers, your desires, your celebrations, your questions and curiosities about all things energetics. It's going to be epic. I have an incredible feeling about this. If you feel the nudge, if you feel the pull, if you feel the yes within you, apply now. We start in January. It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a story that came to me the other day. I've been having a lot of childhood memories come up. And the one that came to me was just reflecting my own feelings about integrity and the the exact moment when that landed for me. So for those of you who don't know, I actually grew up with a single dad. So he was really my primary caretaker for the majority of my life. And when I was in the fourth grade, so I was nine at this time, I was the biggest personality in my class at that time. And I was the teacher's favorite, Mr. Patel, shout out to you, you were the best. I was absolutely the class favorite, okay? Let me just tell you, fourth and fifth grade were like my prime in terms of my social relationships and my popularity. Fourth and fifth grade, I was the star of the show. So we had this system in the fourth grade where everyone's name was on a list. And if you did anything that, you know, was not helpful to the class, or if you were a distraction or interrupting or, or doing something wrong, you got a minus. Like there would just be a little minus. 
And if you were really doing something wrong, you got a red minus. And a red minus meant that you didn't get recess the next day or whenever the next recess would be. So I don't remember what the context or situation was, but Mr. Patel had to leave the classroom for a few minutes. And during this time, he had the neighboring teacher make sure that we weren't making any noise, that we were completely dead silent in this class. So as soon as he came back, he asked us, how was it? And I said in a total smart-ass way, I said, we loved it. <laughs> And he gave the entire class a red minus. Everyone lost their recess because of my gigantic mouth and my inability to not make rude comments. So I obviously feel terrible for having the entire class punished because of me. And of course, I feel like I can push boundaries and I can get away with more because I'm the class favorite. I'm the teacher's favorite. So I was, I I just went way too far that day. It was wrong place, wrong time, wrong, wrong time to make a joke like that. And so of course I felt a great deal of embarrassment because of it. So anyway, the day goes on, school wraps up and then My dad is picking me up from school, and I don't know why. Normally, I would just get in the car, but on that particular day, he had to get out of the car, and he he happened to run into Mr. Patel when he and I were walking back to his car. So once Mr. Patel sees my dad, he immediately explains the entire situation and how I had the entire class punished because of what I said in a really smart ass way and I I start freaking out so now I'm trying to cover my ass I'm like no that's not what I meant blah 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 I'm like falling all over my words slipping and sliding all over the place I cannot keep it together and it's just a hot mess of a conversation so whatever, we, we finish the interaction and when my dad and I get back in the car, my dad tells me, if anything like that ever happens again, just say, I apologize, it won't happen again and be done with it. And for whatever reason... As soon as he told me that, it really landed for me that owning a fuck up is so much more respectable and honorable and easier than trying to justify or wiggle your way out of something or make up excuses or play the victim or anything like that. And the thing is, a really significant part of my ego was developed in that moment. That singular event completely changed my ego. So for those of you who don't know, Jessica is my ego. That's how I refer to her. And the way Jessica feels is if you do not take radical ownership and responsibility for your fuck ups, you look weak and stupid. Okay, so obviously I wouldn't use that harsh language, but that's what she does. She holds that very, very fierce judgment about those who do not take radical responsibility for themselves. She thinks it's stupid and she thinks it's weak. She doesn't like it. She she thinks it looks foolish. Like Jessica would look down on someone who wouldn't actually hold integrity when they make a mistake. It's like you fuck up, you make a mistake, own it. What now? What are you going to do? Try to talk your way out of a mistake? It's going to make it worse. It's like you're going to track mud all over the house if you don't own what has occurred. If you don't take that radical responsibility and hold your integrity in the self-awareness, the consciousness, and being able to see what you've done and how it impacted a particular situation. 
And the reason why Jessica will say, you know, if you're if you're trying to make excuses when you make a mistake, it makes you look stupid. The reason why Jessica feels that way is because we felt stupid. We did not like that interaction in the fourth grade where I was trying to cover my ass and make up excuses and talk my way out of a situation where I fucked up and it felt terrible. It felt terrible and it, it, it I felt so dumb. Really, like I did not like the way it felt. And from that point forward, anytime I made an error or I did something wrong or there was any type of mistake, the easy path for me has always been own it. Own it. You're capable of fixing it and repairing it. It's not the end of the world, but at least own your side of things. Now, the other piece that Jessica brought to this or how she was really, this dimension of her was created because she also, after looking back on that situation, that one conversation, that one moment, she has the perspective that you would look cooler if you didn't make excuses. You would look better and you would look more powerful if you didn't try to cover things up and make all of these ridiculous excuses or play it off as something that it isn't. There was something about the attitude of, yeah, I made a mistake, now what? Owning the error, owning the wrongdoing squashes the problem. Because there's nothing left to discuss. There's not, you're not fighting, you're not resisting, you're not trying to convince someone of anything other than what actually happened. And the more that you can just hold it and be fine with it, it's actually over faster. You're not trying to cover anything up. Now, the other thing that I ended up learning, I'm not sure when I really felt this way or when this settled in on a deeper level, but what I found is that if you don't own it, if you don't just take the responsibility, just suck it up, get it over with, own it, it's going to be fine. If you don't do that and you try to weasel your way out of something or talk your way out of something, anything like that, it makes you paranoid. So building something on a lie or something that lacks integrity just creates such a shaky foundation. Really, because then you are going to be building something on top of a a pivotal piece that if that were to be found out, everything would collapse because of that. So if you are not starting with integrity, it's very difficult to build solid relationships. It's difficult to start a business. It's difficult to build anything on top of a foundation that is not grounded in integrity. This is also, for example, with with cancel culture. A lot of people are afraid of being canceled. The reason why I'm not afraid of being canceled is because I have radical ownership and responsibility for myself. My integrity is one of my biggest strengths. I fear nothing. I fear no mistake. I fear no error. I fear no wrongdoing that I could do in this lifetime. Truly, I don't fear any of it. I trust myself on such a level where I know that my my ability to take ownership, to make a repair, to evolve beyond what whatever I do, wherever I slip up, wherever I make a mistake, is so much bigger than any of the specifics or the details that this whole thing where people are afraid of getting canceled. Integrity makes you bulletproof is the point. And this is something that Jessica loves. At the time that I put out this episode, I'm not sure if the ego episode will be out yet. 
But one of the things that I don't think people realize that often, this might be redundant if this is coming out after the ego episode. Your ego is actually where your personal values come from. So if Jessica wasn't able to discern and make the call, we really like integrity because we don't like feeling stupid. We really like radical responsibility because it gives us this sensation of personal power and being bulletproof. It's a really good sensation that we enjoy, but it's coming through the judgment of what we like and what we don't like. Jessica is the keeper of that information. So when it comes to your personal values, you're sifting through a lot of different information, a lot of different energetic patterns, and then from that standpoint, deciding These are the values that I like. These are the values that I don't. That is an ego-based process every single time because you have to have the judgment of don't like in order to get clarity. And the thing is, when it comes to integrity and just this this deep sense of ownership and responsibility and and taking, taking... the reins on your piece and your role in every interaction, every relationship, every circumstance, everything. It is freeing, it is liberating, and it is a game changer in relationships. So this actually came up in a conversation that I was having the other day with a man in my life. And we were on the phone for quite some time And there was a situation that neither of us liked. It just, it wasn't good for either of us. And one thing that I really wanted to make clear to him was that I understood my role in all of this. I understood the missteps that I personally took that resulted in something blowing up in my face, where it could have been completely avoided if I had fully trusted my boundary where I needed the boundary to be and I didn't do that and so it wasn't actually of high service to the relationship for me to to not own that piece and so I I communicated to him like this is what I know about myself this is where I made an error in this situation that unfolded and now I know what to do better next time That's it. That's a really clean way to handle conflict. But it's very difficult to master conflict if you're not good with integrity. If you feel very shy around owning where you've made a mistake, then it puts you in a position where that paranoia can really kick in and you start posturing. Like, no, I I don't want to own that piece. I don't want to touch that. I don't I don't want to hold that. I don't want to be associated with that scary shadow bit. Whereas you will have much more ease in your conflict and personal relationships if you can hold the shadow bit too. If you can hold the mistakes, if you can hold the fuck ups. Because if not, it's going to lead to a codependent dynamic every single time. If you can't hold your role in conflict, then your partner or the other party is going to have to overcompensate for that and that leads to resentment. So the better you can get at this piece, the more relaxed you will feel and the safer you will feel as you enter conflict. That is one of the greatest things that I have learned from this. Now, This does not work in a dynamic where you are the one who's being overloaded with blame and where you are kind of the receiver or the the one who is having to pick up the slack for other people who don't hold their own responsibilities, who don't take radical ownership. So understand that in order for this high level integrity to really work, if you don't have good discernment, over where you stop and the other person begins, this isn't going to work for you. Okay, so that's the the key thing here. I'm not telling you you can take a terrible relationship and and use this and it's going to fix everything. You cannot polish a turd. Let me just make that really clear. 
That's not what we're talking about here. But this is the other side of when you are really good with integrity. What I can say from my personal experience is that the level of integrity that the people in my world hold is unreal. Unreal. It it even shocks and surprises me in the best possible way. And I know that that could not be possible if I wasn't really, really good with integrity myself. So the the reason why that conversation happened with the man who's in my life that I'm involved with, the reason why that went well is because he also takes radical ownership for his peace. He knows when he fucks up. He knows how to show up for that. He's okay holding the mistakes. He's comfortable with all of that and so am I. So when we come together in a conversation, there's no attacking energy. There's no posturing taking place because we're not afraid of being blamed. It's not something that even enters the dynamic at all because there's no need. There's no need. I don't need you to feel responsible for every single thing that happens. He's not trying to make me responsible for every single thing that happens. We both have our individual pieces that are coming through in the dynamic and then we just speak from that space. The same would go for my friendships. Generally, this is something that comes up in more intimate relationships, just so you know where where this really, really gets dense and this is going to be the most stark and the most prominent. So in my really, really deep friendships, the same type of thing exists where the friendship is easy when both people are taking ownership. If you have integrity in what you know you have done or where you messed up and you can just hold it. So I looked up the exact definition for integrity and it says it's the quality of being honest and fair. Personally, I think the fairness element is the most crucial piece of it because without the fairness, then you're just dealing with honesty. When it comes to integrity, it's being able to survey a situation and being able to energetically, accurately pinpoint where you stop, where the other begins. Because you want to be doing both things at the same time. You want to be taking radical ownership, being radically honest about what's going on with you, where you were at, what your mistake was, right? Responsibility is really, really big in this. But the other piece is, what is the standard that you actually want to hold for others, right? What is fair? I've had plenty of situations where friends have definitely not been their best selves, okay? So, The fairness in that would be, I know we can do better in this relationship dynamic. Boundaries need to be implemented here. This, this isn't fair. I'm able to recognize this piece, not fair to me. This isn't landing well. This isn't serving the relationship. This is absolutely going to cause me to be resentful. That wouldn't be fair to you. So it allows you to really see where the lines are, where the boundaries need to be, where your ownership stops and and the other person, their ownership begins. For myself, integrity, my personal integrity is really what makes me stable. I would say it's one of the characteristics that I have, one of the values that I have that makes me safe, I would say, for other people. Because I'm not, I'm not afraid of taking responsibility. I'm not afraid of not being able to handle myself if something goes wrong. I've got that in the bag. That's a piece of cake. No problem. But at the same time, I am not at risk of 
overloading myself with responsibility, taking on things that really are not about me, have nothing to do with me, or being blamed. So the thing is, when people aren't in their integrity, they start shifting blame. And it's all about who to blame, what to blame. That is the big tell that someone is out of integrity. When I am in my integrity, I own my peace. I know at what point it stops, but I feel no desire to blame whoever I'm in a relationship with or whichever relationship I'm in in that moment, whether it be a professional relationship, a romantic relationship, a friendship, family relationship. If you take unnecessary blame and responsibility, that's a recipe for resentment. If you're in resentment, you are not safe. You're no longer safe once you get into that territory. And you're also not safe if you're saying, okay, here is what I did wrong, but you did blah, 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 and you need to repent for this, and you need, you need, you need, you need. If you're, nope, 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 stop, stop, pump the brakes. You've gone out of bounds. You're no longer safe when you're doing that. Because now you're on offense and that does not invite a whole lot of vulnerability. (laughs) It doesn't invite other people to take ownership and responsibility for their peace. How I see it is my integrity is a gift to the relationships that I'm in. So as if I were just handing over this package with a big gold bow like, okay, here is the gift that I have for you. This is the peace that I own, the honesty that I'm bringing to you, where I stand at this moment in time. This, this is what I'm bringing to you. But there is no pressure on anything else because you have to lean back and trust that the quality of relationship that you've cultivated over time is doing the rest. So for example, I don't have to pressure anyone into taking ownership for their peace. They just do it. They just do it because, first of all, that's what I'm an energetic match for. That's where my expectations are. That is the standard that I hold for the people in my life. That is how I love people. That is how I show up for people, is being able to gift this with them. So what ends up happening naturally is that people want to reciprocate that. So because I do this unconditionally, there I, I don't show up with integrity as a way to manipulate others. I show up with integrity because that is what keeps my, my relationships healthy and it, it's what keeps me feeling my absolute best. In the relationship dynamics that I have, oh, this this episode is getting so good. Anyway, the integrity piece is something that you have to do for all the dimensions, including yourself. You're not doing it as a way to manipulate or extract something from another person. If you do that, you're doing it conditionally. It's going to blow up in your face, I'm telling you right now, because the reality is No matter how much integrity I show up with, there are people who can't meet it. So my dad, for example, ironically enough, he's the the conversation that I had with him and what, what he told me about this was the very thing that triggered this personal value within me. That's what led to a whole cascade of feelings and, and it really solidified my love of personal integrity However, if I if I go into a mediated conversation with him, he cannot match my integrity. Not even a little bit. Not a fraction of integrity in that relationship. And I have to be okay with that. No matter how much I own my peace, I I own it for me first. I do it for me first. I do it because it's what makes me feel my best. Because that's where I trust myself, right? That is the first layer that you have to feel. 
how someone responds as a result to me showing up with my integrity only reveals the depth and the potential that that relationship has. So my best friend, wild amounts of integrity. Like seriously, also one of her biggest gifts and her biggest strengths is the amount of integrity that she can show up with. She can really own a fuck up, unlike anyone else. And she knows how to make repairs. She knows how to evolve. Like that is one of her biggest strengths, hands down. And that's why our relationship has lasted so long. Because look at it this way. If you're in a relationship where you're super grounded, you're showing up with your integrity, you're anchored in yourself, you're feeling your best, you're making moves that are in alignment with you, you trust yourself fully and completely, and then there's just this random person who insists on blaming you and shifting responsibility, but you're only holding that up to the point that you know it's yours, right? So you're already clear on where the boundary of that exists. Okay, the other person can blame all they want. They can flail, they can kick, they can scream, but you're not holding anything beyond what you feel is true for you. You're only holding what you know is your honest, your honest truth. Like, this is what I know is my part in this. Because it has to be real for you. You can't fake integrity. You have to be real. You have to be super authentic in order for this level of integrity to be magnetic in the way that it is for me. Right? This has been a lifelong practice for me at this point. One of the biggest pieces that has helped me out and saved me on many occasions. So you can't fake it, right? You're, you're going to feel paranoid if you're faking it. It's not going to land. It's not going to resonate with people. It's going to make you unstable. If it's not true, then there are going to be little holes where bitterness and resentment and anger and these feelings can seep through if you're not being honest. So even if someone is reacting poorly to you, you're not going beyond your truth. So at that point, the response of the other person doesn't even matter Because you're only owning your piece. And if they really want to blame, project, hate, fight, and you're simply not available for that, and you you don't take the pieces that are not uh, within that, that boundary of what you know to be your truth... The, the honest reality of where you're taking responsibility in this situation, they're going to be repelled. Because someone like that needs you to violate your own boundaries and violate your own truth and absorb that, um, that part of the blame in order for that relationship dynamic to work. So integrity is also something that organically weeds out codependency. At least this is what I have found, is I'm not an energetic match for people who really don't have integrity. They don't like interacting with me. I'm very difficult to be in a relationship with if you're constantly trying to get me to be responsible for things that in my heart don't feel true or don't feel right or that I I simply don't want to change, right? Sometimes there are situations where I'm thinking of a family member at the moment. What is in my integrity, what is my truth, is really at odds with the other person. And it's, I'm handling it this way and I feel good about it. But she's not liking how I'm handling it and wants me to do something differently and wants me to violate my own boundaries and go out of my way and do all of these things that I'm not comfortable with. And those two things are at odds with each other. Me, I'm 100% okay doing what I'm doing. I do not feel differently about it. I'm not going to apologize for it. And if I had a time machine and I went back in time and had to do that situation all over again, I would do the exact same thing. 
And I am not budging on that because it's my truth. What do you want me to do? Lie to you to make you comfortable? Promise that I'm going to do something different when I'm not? That's not integrity. Now you're being deceptive. You're being dishonest. That's the opposite of integrity. So going back to that definition, it's about fairness and honesty. So if you start modifying your truth in order to people please, nope, you're deceptive. That's a lie. That's false. You're not in your integrity anymore. The honesty piece is big. And if you're a people pleaser, the honesty piece is probably where you struggle. And in order for this this aspect of you to really come into play, you've got to get honest. Even when it upsets people, even when it's uncomfortable, even when people disagree. Like that is also, I know it doesn't appear that way at first. Right In the beginning, in the early stages of things like boundary setting and, you know, all all of that stuff. In the early stages, the discomfort, it seems like it's not going to have a payoff. But over time, it does. Once you are practiced, once you are anchored, then it really sets in. Because the longer... You violate your own boundaries or you're not being honest. The more you are portraying a false picture to the person that you're in a relationship with. And look, at a certain point, the cat's going to come out of the bag. At a certain point, you're not going to be able to hide. Whether that be from a really, really, really long time being resentful or being afraid so you just kept kicking the can down the road. And now you're in a very deep situation where it's very hard to dig yourself out of a hole because a lot of things have built on, have been built on lies and you trying to manipulate your way into people being okay with you. Like this is what I'm talking about. If you don't have the integrity piece down, you're going to build something that is not on a stable foundation. And you know what stable foundations do? They crumble. They do not stand the test of time. It is poor relational architecture to not incorporate integrity into your life. Seriously. So the thing is, if you can lean back and trust the process, if you can hold your integrity, really hold your integrity, even when it's hard, even when it's scary, You will develop a stability and a consistency within your relationships where it's safe because it's going to lead to something where you're consistent so people know what they're going to get from you. So my family really did not like the boundaries that I was setting for quite a while. I think it was a couple years that they, it was a, tough pill for them to swallow. That I, I would say no to a lot of things. There were a lot of things that I wouldn't do. No, I will not be at your beck and call. No, I will not do you this favor. Nope, this is your one. I'm not giving you any more than this. They had a very difficult time, right? And they went straight to character assassination, straight to it. But the thing is, I will not bend for you to be comfortable. I will not, I will not abandon my integrity for your comfort. What I will do, however, is hold my integrity so well that you know exactly what you're going to get from me. That is the gift that I bring. I'm consistent. I'm honest. I'm not telling you one thing and resenting you behind your back. Nope. The gift of integrity is other people being able to see your truth and knowing what that looks like and knowing what you bring to the table and them actually getting into a position where they they know what they're going to be met with 
right? If you know my truth, a lot of the time you're going to know where my no's live. You're going to know where my boundaries are. You're going to know all that stuff because I'm consistent, because I'm not abandoning my integrity. I'm not flip-flopping all over the place. I'm not wishy-washy. I am not sliding. I am not bending the rules. I'm holding this. You can meet me with things and you know what you're going to get pretty much every single time. Unless a radical change happens, I'm ultra consistent. (laughs) There are no, when it comes to my integrity, there's no exceptions. So that, in my opinion, is what makes it safe. What I grew up with was inconsistent punishment, was being told one thing and being met with another, was I promise we'll do this and then not doing that. What I was met with was a constant moving target when I was young. The ultimate lack of integrity is what I grew up in. So of course, to me, that's not fun. That's not sexy. That's not conducive to the type and the quality of relationships that I want to hold for myself. What has been true for me in having this personal value for a very, very long time? I would say integrity was probably the very first value that I established within myself and that I started developing within myself. And like I said, it started when I was nine. Granted, it wasn't always this sophisticated, but that original seed, that original understanding was planted at that age. And what I can say is that it it is by far the most liberating and freeing thing that you can do for yourself. Because as I mentioned earlier, I fear nothing. It's been the biggest gift that I can give The people in my audience, the clients that I have, friends, family, my romantic life. I do not walk around on eggshells because of my integrity. I don't fear things because of my integrity. I don't fear conflict because of my integrity. There's nothing that I feel like I can't handle because of my integrity. It is one of the most important things that I have developed within this lifetime. And truly, it's a game changer. If you can incorporate at least one element of this, whatever that might be, whether it's just leaning back and owning a mistake, just saying, okay, I own that. I can handle that. I can take that. I see where I made that error. I see how I showed up in a way that I'm not exactly proud of or I know isn't my best. If you can lean into that, that alone could make a huge difference for some people. For others, maybe it's allowing yourself to be seen in your truth, being honest about what your truth is. Because if if you've got the disease to please, I can tell you right now, you are probably not radically honest. There's probably a lot of hiding, a lot of secrets, a lot of bitterness and resentment that just kind of simmers. And if you can start seeing that defense mechanism as dishonest, like call a spade a spade. It's dishonest. It's a lie. When you lie to someone's face to protect their feelings, you are lying You are deceiving people when you do that. Like, own that piece for yourself. If people-pleasing is like the big thing that you do, if you you withhold a lot, start seeing that as abandoning your integrity, abandoning your truth, and not being honest to the people that you probably want a deeper level of closeness with. What I come to find is that when it comes to people who skew codependent or are in people-pleasing mode a lot of the time, they focus more on the preservation of other people's feelings rather than the fact that they're lying. When you're saying, yes, you're happy to do something that you do not want to do, that's lying. That's lying. So my invitation to you is 
Can you start to see abandoning your integrity in that way or deceiving someone really look at yourself and just say, am I lying to this person right now? Don't focus on, am I going to hurt their feelings? Am I not going to hurt their feelings? No, 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 no. Are you lying right now? That's the question that I am inviting you to replace it with. Because there is something that shifts when you stop focusing on doing damage control, which is what people pleasing really is. When you get out of that self-preservation and I'm going to abandon my integrity so that I can live under this false idea that I'm keeping you safe. And instead ask yourself, am I being honest? Am I deceiving? Do I feel an impulse to lie right now? And sit with that. Really ask yourself that. And then look back on how often am I lying? Ask yourself that one too. Am I lying to my loved ones? And use, I, I want to be clear, use the word lying. I want you to be heavy handed with the language intentionally so that you can see clearly where you're dropping the integrity. I also want to be clear, this isn't to punish yourself or or feel bad. Again, that would not be what we've just talked about with ownership and radical responsibility when it comes to integrity. Integrity in that context, if you've been a people pleaser for a long time, would be, you know what? I've been lying to absolutely everyone about the stuff that I do and don't want to do. I've been lying for years. I have been making up a complete fabrication about what I like and don't like. I have been doing a mass disservice to the relationships in my life because I really haven't been honest or in my integrity around this. To me, there's no self-punishment in integrity. You're not caving. You're not crumbling. You're not like, oh, don't do the whiny shit. Don't. It, uh, let me tell you, the whining and self-punishment is not hot. It's not. It Just don't do it. Integrity, way better. Way cleaner. And the thing is, you can own something, you can take responsibility without beating yourself up. That is what integrity is. Integrity is... I'm honest, I'm seeing myself, I know what's going on. And with what I just said a few moments ago about, I've been lying, I haven't been honest, I haven't been honest about where I'm at. If someone came up and said those exact words to you, I can imagine a lot of you would be like, damn, I I completely respect you for saying that and owning that piece. It is much more respectable and it is much more enticing when you bring that to the table than whining and hiding and and feeling bad about yourself. Don't. Don't. We've all got our thing. So if you really struggle with this, then the first step in the integrity would be own that maybe you struggle with this. Own that... You might not be honest or fair to yourself or others. If you're not being fair to yourself, that looks like taking on responsibility where it's not yours. If you're not being fair to others, it's shifting blame. Blaming other people, positioning and posturing as being the victim, right? That is also not fair to constantly be in that mode and not look at your role in an interaction, in a dynamic or situation. So really see, are you being honest? Are you being fair? And if you're not being honest, my love, that means you are being deceptive. So that would be the first piece to own in all of this. What I would like to wrap up this podcast with is understand that the amount that you can hold the amount of integrity that you have, what you trust yourself with, what you know yourself to have the capacity to hold, and 
owning your truth so much so to where the people in your life are not second guessing it, that is a huge gift. For myself personally, I feel like that's one of the biggest gifts that I bring to everyone that I interact with. The other thing that I know to be true is that nothing bad has ever, ever come from my integrity. Ever. Only good things, only deeper relationships, high quality connections, business growth, only good things come from my integrity. And I know this to be true for others as well. I don't believe that it makes any energetic sense or is energetically possible for you to stand in high integrity and be an energetic match for things turning out worse than where you started. Now, of course, account for the learning curve, account for the implementation curve where if you're just setting boundaries with family, right, that doesn't always go over well because it's a change. It's, it's um, you're working out the bugs, You're fortifying the boundaries, things like that. So just understand that in practice, in reality, when you hold this within yourself, it's met with only higher quality experiences. Then you become a match for people who are of the same caliber of integrity as well. So don't be afraid. Just understand there might be some... Uh, somewhat of a learning curve in all of this, depending on where you're starting. All right, my friends, that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have loved this episode. Don't forget, if you would like to apply to Eden, if you want to get in, if you want some magic in 2022, then go to onyxhealing.com slash Eden. The link will be in the show notes or the description box, depending on where you're listening to this. I love you so much. Have a beautiful week, everybody. I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.